Hello everyone, I'm Neetle and this is Tintin in Tibet. Uh, so we're going to play this on the hard difficulty. Uh, the main difference uh, with the hard difficulty is that there are more obstacles in the way and also the amount of time that you have to complete levels is shorter, which is actually an issue even in the speedrun because some levels have RNG and this game is not really well made. So this is based on the Belgian comic books. This was made by Infograms. You might you might know them because they they do they are really famous for making uh, every adaptation of Belgian and French comic books like Tintin, uh, The Smurfs, Lucky Luke. They made a lot of games, and the big thing is that they always look good, but they are terrible to play and really really hard. So let's get started right away. Let's go. So we start off actually in Tintin and the Blue Lotus. This level shows how Tintin met Chang. And we took a damage that we didn't want to take there, but that's all right. We are going to do a lot of damage boosting uh, throughout the run because that's one of the main threat of the game. So already you saw that this game has got a, a foreground mechanic. You can move towards the foreground to avoid some enemies, which is a pretty cool idea. But uh, yeah, the game doesn't actually tell you or show you when you're supposed to do that or not, when you can do it or not. And we're already on to our first auto scroller. Uh, so yeah, you might notice these whirlwind of water appearing a bit out of out of nowhere. And that's the main issue with this game is that most things coming at you, uh, well, you can't actually react to them. You have to memorize everything. Plus, on her, on top of that, uh, the physics uh, is not really good. So you playing this game feels like being on high physics all the time. And that's the main reason why this game is so bad, <laughs> even though it looks great. And that's really, uh, well, this game is really unpopular uh, in France. Uh, it feels like everybody uh, has heard of it. And when, when French pl players think of bad game, they usually have this game uh, coming up in their mind. All right, so now we're actually in the Tintin Tibet uh, story. Tintin is on holiday and everything is trying to murder him. So we're going to damage boost through this cleaning lady. This little dog is actually the most terrifying enemy in the game because the collision box is so big and it's really a difficult jump to make. And as you might notice, I usually jump uh, before they appear on the screen. So yeah, something else about this level and this game overall, uh, you have objectives in levels, but the game doesn't tell you about that. And it also doesn't tell you in which order you're supposed to do them. So in this level, I'm supposed to go see the, the TV news uh, because I learned that the plane crashed in Tibet. And then we're going to collect a letter and we're going to learn that uh, Cheng was actually in that plane. And so, we're going to try to rescue him. That's the main story of Tintin in Tibet. On the top right you can see a timer and the timer keeps running during uh, conversations and uh, final cutting. So even though this is the end of the level, I could still time out, which is uh, something that probably happened to most players uh, playing this game casually. So the market, uh, it starts off right away with something coming out of nowhere. We have to talk to this guy on the bottom left uh, and then we're going to damage boost through the cyclist. So yeah, uh, Tintin uh, in the 90s really got a, a big revival. Uh, we got a cartoon in the early 90s and uh, then we got uh, several games uh, based around him. Uh, this game well, was made in less than a year and one of the big things is that most of the designers uh, who made this game, this was their first game and I messed that up. Uh, 
pretty bad, but that's all right. It's a bit expected. I really hate this level <laughs> because these spots can actually desync, and uh, you can end up in situations where uh, you just get hit, whatever you do. And I messed that up a little bit. At least we got all, all our health back, which should make things a bit easier. Also, this kid uh, actually tells you to follow him, but you have to go all the way. Uh, you have to go the other way. Because that's the logic of this game, uh, telling you what to do and actually uh, it's lying to you. Okay, I'm going to focus a little bit here because I'd like to keep my health. We damage boost through this. Uh, we duck down here. I'm going to damage boost here because we don't actually care about this. More damage boost. Okay, we're going to collect the life because... In this game, well, due to RNG I might lose several lives uh, towards the end of the game. These little bells as well, they can help me actually. Like I said, every, everything is a danger to uh, Tintin in this game. So the storm level, this is in my opinion one of the worst level uh, casually because it's really really hard to read. It's really, really hard to see everything coming at you and uh, as you may have noticed I still have uh, didn't get any uh, password or anything like that and they really made sure that uh, people <laughs> don't, don't uh, clear the first four levels when they run this game. So I picked up this crate so that I uh, build a bridge for this little girl because she wants to get home but uh, due to the storm she can't do that so we're going to help her out which is going to unlock the end of the level and that barrel is getting in the way. Alright. Uh, it's really really precise the position uh, where you activate stuff so casually what will happen is that you'll see something you know that it's going to come at you but even by just walking near it you'll still get hit because the the way things triggers in this game is really really weird right the lower mountain level we're going to pick up another life in a normal one that would replenish my life but here we were already full life i just want to make sure that uh, i won't game over we're going to damage boost through this yak usually what you're supposed to do is uh, use grass to force them to move out of the way because these yak actually deal two damage to you all right okay i made it through that section that was a bit uh, a bit scary there's a hidden apple uh, behind this rock going to pick it up so that I make sure that I don't die right there because that rock is a bit hard to avoid all right so in this stage uh, snowy gets drunk because he, he drank a little bit of whiskey and he falls into the river and we have to rescue him Again, it's another uh, scroller, except this one we can speed it up a little bit by climbing on this rock and uh, running uh, on those. There's a Genesis version of this game, which is actually a bit worse. Uh, the physics is a little bit different. Uh, it is, it's its uh, own kind of worse. And, uh, of bad, I'm sorry. And uh, also, the music is really, really bad on the Genesis. And the game uh, changes a few things also, like for instance, when you collect a life, you don't regain your health on the Genesis version. So the Genesis version is a bit harder, and uh, in terms of speedrun, uh, it's not as uh, in interesting. So that's why I'm playing the SNES version mostly. Actually, 
think you, nobody plays the Genesis version. Everyone, everyone hates it. <laughs> All right, this stage, so... Okay, what's happening there? It's all right. This stage, these orange statues, I have to go on the left side. If I go on the right side, I die instantly. Because they bring bad luck, and that's how luck works for Tintin. Okay, also, what's a bit complicated with those is that uh, when I jump, I actually slow down a little bit. So jumping over this rock is a bit uh, counterintuitive because you have to jump really late. Also, some of these uh, trees are glitched and uh, especially the final one, you might try to slide under it, but you'll still get damaged. Okay. Here we go. Even though I slided, I, j I still take the damage there. It's random whether you get through it or not. So, yeah, casually, it's really frustrating because, well, you did the right thing, but this game is a bit broken in places. Another maze level where you have to uh, use the snowballs at platform. And what's a bit complicated is that it's never clear whether it's foreground, background, or, or platform. And the collision as always is really, really precise. So there are times it feels like you did something properly and uh, no, you didn't. Right, uh, going to get on top of this. Uh, and we're going to damage boost through this snowball. So yeah, overall, once you know how, the d how this game works, it's a pretty uh, nice game to play. It's like, uh, it has, uh, the flow of the game is pretty good. It's just that, yeah, they make sure that uh, you couldn't complete the game when you rented it. One of the reasons they decided to adapt Tintin in Tibet uh, is because when uh, they tried to get the license, uh, Munasa, who owns the IP, didn't want to have any variants in the game. And Tintin in Tibet is uh, one of the, the only uh, Tintin book uh, that, that has actual no fights in it. So. And at some point, Mulasa wanted to make a game all every, with uh, every stage uh, based around Snowy. So you would play only Snowy in the, in the game. So here, uh, this level introduces a bit of RNG with these things. We're going to collect a few items that we're going to use throughout the level. So first we get the pickaxe. Here it's random whether I take one damage or two. We're actually going to take only one damage, which is great. We collected a rope uh, that we'll use a bit later on. So we use the pickaxe to climb up slope like this. Okay, that's all right. We're going to use the rope there and use it over here. What's frustrating with the slopes and the rope and uh, everything that you have to use actually in, the, in this game is that the positioning is really precise and I'm, yeah, I'm a bit scared here because of the uh, ice physics because you can easily uh, land on the platform and just slide off so but uh, that went that went well. So yeah, the, the positioning for using item is really, really precise. So that rope, you have to really land uh, with the rope on the, the waist of Tintin. And the slope, if you're a little bit off, uh, Tintin will just slide off the, the, off, uh, off the slope. Okay. We're going to collect this apple. This stage also another uh, another stinker because uh, well it's another maze and this time they put a lot of foregrounds and sometimes you can go behind them and sometimes you can't. You're only seeing a little bit of this of this stage. 
because this stage is really massive. Alright, uh, managed to do this jump. Okay, this is pretty bad. Hopefully I don't die. Okay, we should get through. Main issue here, these rocks uh, start the falling animation while they are off screen. So if you don't know that they are there and that you have to stop, uh, well, you just get hit because you can't move down uh, on the slope. Actually, the Spiro game is, uh, in my opinion, a lot worse than this. <laughs> so I don't know if Spiro would be able to just run up uh, the slope. But uh, the, in the Spiro game, he, he has uh, some kind of a uh, stun gun, so he would shoot all these yak and uh, all this stuff. All right, so the climbing stage, uh, this was really the stage that I wanted to play as a kid because they, they advertised this on the back of the, the, the cover of the game, of the box. And uh, I think it's a really, really cool idea. Uh, main problem is that this is another maze and uh, it's really hard to figure out where you're supposed to go in this stage. The way it works is that when you touch snow, you're supposed to fall, except not all the snow section have collisions. So in the run, we try to uh, optimize this by uh, going on the section that have no snow at all. I'm trying to focus a little bit because this is the kind of stage where if you make a mistake, you just die instantly. The, the health is really not important in this. This is definitely the fastest way to move uh, in the environment. So you can use the pickaxe to secure yourself and the other character can swing. Here, casually, you would go to the bottom right and go all the way around the level, but actually this section doesn't have any collision, so... It is really uh, frustrating when you discover this because the other way around is at least two minutes long. So if you go the other way around, you're supposed to collect the clock to gain more time in the level. Otherwise you can't complete it. This right here is the way that you're supposed to go. So it's really not in intuitive. Okay, I'm going to focus a little bit here because even though it looks simple, this is a place where I die quite a lot because I tr usually try to eat just like that. Okay, we're going to do the, the safe way. So Tintin, you can climb on stuff like that. And the main difference with the pickaxe is that the pickaxe, uh, the character uh, will remove the pickaxe after a certain of, amount of time. But uh, when he's on top of a rock like that, standing, uh, he just stays like that forever. All right, we're about to collect uh, Cheng's scarf. Again, I'm going to do this a bit safely. Fun fact, uh, so right here I collected the scarf with Captain Haddock. On the Genesis version, you have to use a Tintin. So... Yeah, I don't know why the Genesis version forces you to use Tintin. I mean, in the book it's Tintin that collects it, but I mean, come on. So frustrating. <laughs> uh, first time you you get to this point in, on the Genesis version and you don't, you don't know why uh, what you're supposed to do. All right, the snowstorm. This is the, the place where your PB comes to die because it has this wind mechanic that is RNG. And this is a stage where I can actually time out uh, just because the wind might not be nice to me. And I might have to wait for like a minute for the wind to blow in the right direction. All right. Uh, okay, we made it through this section. The wind is still nice to us. Okay. So this level has got two sections. You can either complete the level from the outside or enter this cave. 
great thing about the cave is that it doesn't have the wind so it's faster okay yeah this jump is the worst and we made it through so that's nice we're going to damage boost through this rock and for some reason this rock right here doesn't have any, any collision because it doesn't activate fast enough that's a good summary of this game sometimes one thing behaves one way and then it, it behaves another way okay here the wind can be really really mean and we're through Phew. so the monastery uh, this level relies only on puzzles first one is a uh, Simon says so I'm going to focus a little bit because I usually mess this up uh, a little bit when doing commentary here we go Okay, got the first one right. And here we go. Phew, that went well, so that's nice. Uh, here we have to avoid these monks because, like I said, everything will try uh, to murder Tintin. You might remember uh, Procentia played this, uh, the Game Boy version of this game. Uh, game Boy version is uh, a lot better in my opinion. Uh, first of all, it has more password. Uh, then it's, um, well, it's less uh, cryptic. Like uh, when the game tells you to do something, usually that's the thing that you're supposed to do. Actually, every infogram uh, game uh, usually the Game Boy version is always better yeah I agree with you that I really enjoyed the the Tintin movie uh, from 10 years ago if you're interested uh, <laughs> We made some live-action uh, Tintin movies back in the 50s, and they are pretty fun uh, to watch. I mean, they are a bit dated, but uh, they are a fun watch. Right, this section we have to clean up, uh, stack up these books based on their colors. Unlike the Game Boy version, this is always the same thing. Uh, so this section is a bit dull in the run. Yeah, and for the for the Game Boy version, most of these puzzles are randomized, and also they, they put it in in the menu, so it's easier to uh, to uh, to figure out and and to solve. If you're colorblind, this ver this uh, puzzle on the Genesis version is really really bad. Because every color uh, just looks the same, so... But you know, overall, I, I think... I think something is that that's great about this game is that it's pretty ambitious, in my opinion, for the time. It's like it has a lot of really cool ideas. The main issue is that it's way too difficult and uh, the, the physics is pretty bad. I read an interview of the designer of this game and he says that the game was so hard that when he went on holiday and he came back he couldn't complete it uh, even though <laughs> it was it, he made every level in the game so all right here we have to recreate reposition these four symbols we actually saw them uh, earlier in the level on the wall these are randomized and finally we have an audio puzzle so we're going to hear three sounds and we have to find the belt that makes the third sound okay i'm not sure about this one no yeah here we go the the sound of these bells are really close <laughs> to one another so it's a it's a bit 
difficult to figure out uh, the first time. On the first turn. All right, right here, the Yeti uh, cave. So if the shadow touches me, I die instantly. On the Genesis version, you don't die instantly. But the Yeti's pattern is really weird on the Genesis version. It's like it jumps up, uh, up and down. We jump before this rock appears on the screen. Here we're going to hide behind this rock, which is a really cool idea, but uh, but yeah, it's not explained and never used again. And here we have to pray a little bit because, oh no, the end of the Yeti got me, forgot to jump. Well, you know, that's the way it works. There's a little bit of a shadow that touches you and you die. Right, it's all right. Uh, so right here, I despawn the shadow by jumping back. You're supposed to go back all the way to the start of the level, but if you do that movement quick enough, uh, you can get through it. So I can't really damage boost through these rocks because uh, well, the thing is that I can have a knockback animation playing and if the knockback animation triggers, uh, the shadow will catch me. All right, let's not mess this up again. And here, uh, this bit is a bit RNG. If it catches me or not, it's completely random. Okay, we're good. And so we rescue Cheng. And that's the end of the game, that's time. Phew, <laughs> this game is always a bit intense because so many things can just murder you instantly. But uh, yeah, the ending, so it's mostly Cheng explaining what, what happened to him. So his plane crashed, uh, uh, he got rescued by the, the Yeti. Uh, the Yeti kept him alive uh, all this time and Cheng just left clues uh, everywhere he was so that he could be fine by Tintin. And that's the ending. The Yeti was actually a uh, really, really nice creature. So nowadays, well, this game got a sequel. Uh, they made uh, another game based on Prisoner of the Sun, which got a lot more interesting ideas uh, thrown into it. Uh, I really recommend checking that out if you enjoy this game. Uh, and uh, hopefully we'll have another Tintin game uh, coming up soon uh, since uh, there's a new publisher who's kind of doing loads of uh, adaptation of Belgian and French comic books again. So we'll have a new Tintin game uh, hopefully soon. And that's it for me. So I hope you enjoyed the, the run and uh, enjoy the rest of the marathon.